on spying with John Stockwell, who was in the CIA for 13 years and wrote his famous book, In Search of Enemies. Over the past uh, several months, we've had these rather bizarre uh, exposés about spies and the defector from the Soviet Union who re-defected and all. That seems so rather, really strange. What do you make of this the Soviet uh, agent who re-defected and all? Can you well, make sense of it for us? The broader subject is, uh, and, and mind you, I've, I've gotten many phone calls, people, journalists, uh, TV people asking for my, my uh, <laughs> assessment. Uh, and the question is, why are we having so many spies and were we having in 1985 a dozen or so that we catch, you know? Why is our nation suddenly going bad? Why are people all of a sudden spying? And this question was so superficial, I couldn't believe some of the people who were asking it were asking it because the spies didn't begin spying in 1985. They were just all arrested in 1985. Uh, the, the, one, the, the red Chinese uh, spy had been reporting for, for uh, 30 years. Uh, another family had been working for, for 18 years and others for varying periods of time. The fact that they're all arrested in one period of time means nothing more than the fact that they were arrested in one period of time. This means that the policy of the U.S. government towards arresting uh, people suspected of espionage had changed and become much more aggressive. And that gets back to the arguments of Jim Angleton, the, the, the notoriously paranoid counterintelligence chief of the CIA, now retired, uh, who believed that the agency was riddled with, with spies, and he couldn't get approval authority to, to arrest them and go after them. Allegedly, he had a, a team of assassins, and they would do Victor Marchetti's book and Victor Marchetti's lectures address this, and he, he worked in the same office. He said they would do... Angled and wanted to go and hit the CIA people suspected of being double agents? Well, what Marchetti said they did, in mm -hmm. fact, mm -hmm. since the policy then was to spare the U.S. government of the embarrassment of finding spies in its own ranks to make us look ideologically pure and the Soviet Union would be riddled with spies and defectors. And so the policy then was not to prosecute unless you absolutely had to, and there were relatively few prosecutions. Accor according to Marchetti, and he didn't have too much credibility when he was first bringing out this thesis in the mid-70s, <laughs> now, he, now he looks much better. Uh, was that when they would find a spy back then, they would do one of two things. That they had an office, they would kill them. Or, uh, which would, would be done, as, as he put it, mo only in the more, you know, the more dangerous, the more dramatic cases. In the other cases, they would go to them and say, uh, we know what you've been up to. Uh, we think you should retire and go and live in Florida. And if you ever breathe a word to anyone of what you've done, then we will prosecute. And then, according to Marchetti, there was another out that they had, which would be to shoot someone up with, uh, with drugs, blow their mind with drugs. And then, uh, you know, they, they are clearly mentally unbalanced. And then the CIA steps into the family and says, you know, we're very sorry, this uh, patriotic citizen, you know, his work colleague has worked with us, your father, your, your husband, uh, has had this breakdown. We will put them in this uh, to protect the secrets that he might reveal. We'll put them in this special nice sanatorium, and we'll foot the bill for the rest of his life, and you can go and visit him on Sundays. And so the family feels grateful, and they can go and visit their loved one on Sundays, and he's kept shot up with drugs until his mind is completely blown, and it can be of no, you know, in fact, is crazy, and has, it can be of no uh, threat to anyone. This is what Marchetti was saying was being done, and, and as being the explanation of why we had so few prosecutions over the years. Uh, in 1985, they clearly, a new Justice Department, they clearly decided that, that they looked so cynical already that they might as well get a plus from it instead of a minus. They began prosecuting spies and going after them one after the other vigorously and getting as much publicity from it as they could. John, on one hand, obviously the Reagan administration has decided to aggressively go after these spies, but on the other hand, they must have some way of getting them. Are there new techniques? What are some of the methods they're using? Is there increased surveillance, electronic gadgetry that's helping catch them, or what? Well, according to the Marchetti thesis, uh, there are no new techniques. They were catching them all along. They just weren't prosecuting very many of them very dramatically. 
uh, it could very well be that they have, in fact, they do have uh, more sophisticated electronic techniques now than they had 10 years ago and 20 years ago and 30 years ago. Uh, my guess is that, uh, my own sense of the thing is that uh, the Mar Marchetti thesis is probably uh, the explanation. They were finding these people before and just not going after them. This was our understanding when I was in the agency. We talked about this a lot. And uh, this was our understanding, was that they just, uh, the place had to be riddled with spies, but uh, they were just not prosecuting them. Well, what part did lie detectors play in this? Well, the CIA people have to take lie detector tests once a year, is that it? When, when, when we went in, we all took a lie detector, and then they told us we would be boxed, as we called it, once a year. In fact, nobody was boxed uh, oh. ever, except if they were uh, subject of, of some specific investigation. I see. And uh, once in a while, very rarely, uh, you would see two or three people in your area division uh, would be called in to be boxed. And this, of course, would cause a lot of gossip and a lot of hard <laughs> feelings. And, of course, you never knew whether they themselves were being investigated or whether, in fact, they were, uh, they were dummies. You know, somebody else is being investigated, so you do three people over here so it won't single out the one person that you're really interested right. in. So this now, is a difference. They are more aggressively using these lie detectors. Well, now apparently you are. And, of course, the lie detector machine is virtually worthless in terms of, of finding out, you know, is, is someone lying. Uh, but it does have one psychological, the reason they cling to it, because they're not foolish, they wouldn't waste uh, all that resource if it was totally ineffectual. Its effect is in scaring people. This is one of the few things I've seen President Reagan say that I agreed with. Is <laughs> the other day he said, he said it forces people to confess. And it is true that there are a lot of people who, when they're faced with the fact that they're going to be boxed, will kind of have a mini nervous breakdown and say, oh yes, I, uh, as a matter of fact, I wanted to tell you something. And start to and, cut a deal. And start to mm -hmm. cut a deal or start to explain or say something which will lead to other things. Uh, it won't get anyone who has any kind of strength of their convictions and refuses to cooperate. It'll show that they're nervous. It'll show that they had too much coffee <laughs> that morning. Uh, or maybe not anything at all. The way the... Uh, the way the Soviets, for example, teach uh, their operatives that they're sending against us to beat the lie detector test is uh, they'll practice and they, you know, they, they have training classes until they really get it down of thinking of something stressful or, or pinching themselves, hurting themselves uh, at, at a give, for, for questions on which they're telling the truth. And, and then that'll create the reaction on the machine, and then when you ask them a question in which they have to lie, it'll create the same reaction, more or less. And the operator can't, you know, he can't judge whether or not you're lying. He can only say the machine shows some stress at, at every mm -hmm. third question. And uh, it's a simple technique, and it works with practice with certain type of people. Let's ask uh, the question about the Yurchenko affair. That would seem very strange from two aspects. First of all, that he just wandered off and uh, went home so easily, and secondly, that supposedly he was the one who was fingering all, a lot of the, some of these spies that were later prosecuted, and according to the government, there are a lot of other prosecutions coming up because of the information Yurchenko gave them. This sounds so bizarre. Because he returned to the Soviet Union after that's That's happening, yeah. yeah. He, uh, he, he in, in my assessment, and, and needless to say, that's another one I've been called about many times, uh, in my assessment, he had to have been sent over by the Soviets. I believe if you go back and read the ones that they claim were fingered by uh, Yurchenko, you don't find any important ones. Uh, and, and one of them that was fingered conveniently escaped the country before the FBI could pick him up. Uh, the, 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 the first point you brought out is not strange of how could he wander off uh, you know, by now, after four or five decades of dealing with a communist Soviet Union, we've had dozens of thousands of defectors. Occasionally, dramatic ones get high publicity, but uh, the United States government has no intention of getting in the p position of financing for the rest of their lives at thirty-five or $40,000 a year every Russian who wants to come and live in the United States. <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, you're talking about, you know, all together, you consider all the people that came across the wall in Berlin and everything, you're talking about maybe 50,000 people at $35,000 a year. You know, forget it. The policy is what you want to do is debrief them of anything they may know. And certainly Yurchenko, if he had been legitimate, would have known a great deal, the number five man in the KGB. Uh, debrief them of anything you can get from them and then eventually get them out in society where they're earning their own living, where they're being Americans. They want to come to America. Your objective is to make them into Americans where they earn their own living. You don't want a lot of wards of the government hanging around as they add up over the years. In addition to which, they turn out inevitably to be nightmarish handling problems. It's, it's, every interest is to make them feel at home, settled, and eventually get them jobs so they have their own apartment and their own social life and their own jobs, and they make their own way. Uh, so his, you know, it, it's, he was not in prison. He was not locked up. You don't lock these people up except in, in rare circumstances. To the contrary, you're taking them to dinner in a town, and you're working towards it eventually when they'll have their own apartment and house and car and their own lives altogether. Well, he hadn't been here that long, had he? Well, it had been, what, five months. Oh, that long? And, okay. Uh, yeah, he came out in the summer, and then it's, yeah, se oh, five months, I believe and several months, and he was having dinner downtown. He was apparently cooperating fully. There was no uh, indication that, uh, no reason for them to have him under lock and key. And they had, in fact, kept Noshenko, another defector, back at the time, right after the Kennedy assassination, they had kept him in a safe house, locked up, in prison, in effect, sort of a, a, a special prison arrangement, uh, for three years. And they were heavily criticized for this, eventually. Eventually, they did get him, you know, let him out and got him a job and, uh, and, and have sort of supported him. Uh, but but, but he, he has established his own life. Uh, this guy they were handling in a more routine way. And he walked away. When, when the, the CI guy who was having dinner with him went to make a phone call, uh, Yurchenko walked outside, which he was perfectly free to do, and went down the street and into the embassy. Wouldn't that seem rather strange, though, uh, that he could face severe reprisal, maybe an execution if he went back, he, if he were legitimate. I, I do not believe that he was a legitimate defector who became you know, emotionally disturbed. This is the CIA covering itself for having bungled an operation, nor do I believe his claim that he was kidnapped and drugged. Uh, that, that just doesn't, it doesn't wash as I read the thing. There is a formality that they go through. They have to brief the Senate. The Senate committee has to meet and agree to accept a defector. That CIA case officer out there in Rome, that station chief, does not have authority to accept responsibility for a defector. He does not have the legal authority to, to give him a visa, much less a passport, to bring him into the United States. That has to be approved by the Congressional Committee, which apparently was done in this case. The Congress was not outraged that they had been used in that sense. The fact that he walked into the Soviet Embassy and the next day uh, had a press conference, went to the State Department with his buddies from the embassy with him, and then flew away, uh, to me is a strong indication that uh, it was planned ahead of time for the reason that the, the Soviets in the KGB, in their foreign service, are n notoriously very, very cautious about reacting to dramatic situations. They do not jump until they have a reading from Moscow on which direction to jump. If, the, if they jump to support the guy and wave and smile and walk with him to the State Department and cheer and applaud what he's done in his story, and then it's decided two days later back in Moscow that he's a jerk and should be put away, they've done themselves you know, a bad turn. Uh, the fact that they were so obviously enthusiastic about what he'd done and working with him uh, indicated to me that it was the, the culmination of a very successful uh, operation, which they were very proud of, and they knew which way to jump. They knew what to do when he walked into the embassy. What would you speculate actually happened then, from that the, the Soviets wanted him to come over and, and pretend to defect and then feed bad information to the CIA well, and then re-defect? The bad information th uh, theory would not completely uh, work because uh, when he goes back, the CIA would have to know, I mean, Noshenko stayed. 
Now, the argument with Noshenko is he was sent over to tell the United States that uh, the Soviet Union had not sent Lee Harvey Oswald to kill JFK. And, and the theory there is that the Soviets sent him to defect to get this message to us and in fact sacrificed him and a lot of information he would give us about other subjects just to make sure we wouldn't go to war over them or try to kill their leaders. Uh, this guy, he comes out and a few months later goes back, then everything he said is suspect and has to be reanalyzed and put in great doubt. So it wouldn't be a very effective way to send false signals or information uh, to the CIA. So it would look more like uh, a game. Or an attempt to embarrass the CIA yeah, to make them look a bad. Ploy. Yeah, a ploy. The Soviet Union at a time when it, it needs a uh, more aggressive uh, image, it needs to strike back, it needs a little success. It's, it's lost uh, strings of agents in uh, several European countries in the last few years and looked, uh, looked like it's losing the spy game. And this would be a way of showing the world of, and itself and its own operatives that, hey, you know, we can take the CIA, run a high level guy in there and bring him back in a few months time and make them look bad for a change. If you look at the furor and stir this caused and the embarrassment to the CIA, it was a very successful operation mm -hmm. if, if it was planned by the Soviet Union all along. Strange. Curious. It's a very strange world you're talking <laughs> about. Don't ever forget that thing we talked about last time of the CIA station chief in Saigon delivering our most sensitive information to the communists throughout the end. For several years. For, for some period of time, yes. Yeah. It's a very strange world indeed. Doug Kellner now has 